We go to the Igloo, where the 11-2 Eskimos hosted the 12-3 Hermantown Hawks, and this one was jam-packed. And for good reason, despite Esco's 13-0 start. Hermantown still running away with the ball as Abraham Sumas pulls up for two. Hawks maintaining that lead now, 17-6. And then it's the P.J. Fleck commit. Coy the boy Parrish just weaving his way through traffic, dropping one in for two, although Esco still trails 22-10. But the visiting Hawks continue to go to work. Sumas on the attack, draws the foul, and gets it. That'll do for the three-point play as the Hawks go up 29-14. Esco still pressing. Senior Quinn Berger enters the chat and cashes in on the jumper to tighten the gap, 34-22. And then this guy's back, showing he can play more than just football. Well, that's old news now. Paired with another bucket, Esco trails by eight now. And they would climb back to the top to earn the 72-62 comeback win over Hermantown. And to the beloved Juice Box now, where both the boys and girls of Superior and Duluth East went head-to-head -head earlier this evening. The boys earned the 58-26 victory over the Spartans, while Dave Cotney and his Spartans earned a big win over the Greyhounds, 82-46. And last but not least, for high school hoops, we conclude at Proctor with the Rails and the Lumberjacks. This one was like a seesaw back and forth, but here comes Chloe Carlson with the lefty layup to take the 22-18 lead. It's the purple now with the ball now. Macy Girl just chucks it half court to feed Lauren Hughes, and Hughes completes the assignment, making this a one-point game, 23-22. But she can shoot, too. Macy with the big jumper. Sail this one silly one-possession game. Rail's coming in hot now. Paige Evans to Presley to Connie on the cut. And what do you know? We've got a tie ball game at 25. But in the end, the Rails protected their house with a 54-50 dub over the Jacks. Didn't well if I didn't want to leave some of those good games, but... Yeah, a lot of good basketball. Thanks, Alexis. We'll be right back.